This is the Athlete of the Week, and it's brought to you by Diamond Point and Sox Center here on Mid-Minnesota Sports. And with us today is a Melrose athlete. This is Mac Walbeck. Hi. Hi. <laughs> is it okay I call you Mac? Yeah, most people do. <laughs> All right. Because your full name is what? Mackenzie. Mackenzie. And not Kenzie? Nope. Okay. Mackenzie. Is there is there a story behind uh, mom and dad naming you Mackenzie? Um, not really. They kind of just tried to pick something easy for my dad. And he still can't remember it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so Mac is fine then, yeah, right? Yeah, Mac is fine. Okay, tell us about your family, okay? So my mom and dad are Donna and Alan, and I have a 31-year-old sister, a 28-year-old brother, Danielle and Tyler, and then a twin brother, Cody. Is that right? Yes. You're a twin, I didn't realize that. Yes, I do have a twin. <laughs> okay, because what else does he do at uh, school for activities? He plays hockey for the Prairie Center team. All right, because I see you at the hockey games. Yeah. You're easy to spot because you're the girl with the crutches. Yeah, you <laughs> has been for the past how long? Too long. Very, right? Yes, mm. way too long. And you're also the first one to name your uh, brothers and sisters by age. <laughs> 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 That's all right, though. <laughs> Tell us uh, what you do at, uh, at Melrose High School, okay? Well, I'm a senior, and I participate in softball, gymnastics, and soccer. And soccer. Yes. Uh, I didn't realize you played soccer. Yes, this is my first year not playing due to having my surgeries. Okay. That's also something I do want to talk about because you've had your share of injuries, haven't you? Yes. Multiple. And, uh, <laughs> yes. When I see you or somebody like Greta Klopp Hockey, you can name a lot of body parts, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go through some of the ones that you've had to overcome yourself. Um, well, I had three Achilles surgeries within the past nine months. Um, I've had... A lot of issues to my fingers due to catching, some fractured wrists, stuff like that from catching. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> you know, I realize that uh, getting injured is part of playing, right? Uh, how do you overcome that, though? Because uh, it has to be pretty depressing right away, right? Yeah, it kind of is. I kind of just look to, it's another day, I'll get through it. Everybody has them. Mine just happened to have taken longer than most to get through. but. Another day, another practice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, wherever the injuries come from, gymnastics? Um, my, when I had my Achilles, I kind of had it. It's called Hagelin's deformity. It's like extra bone growth. So that kind of just like happened to come up. And then a lot of them were softball related and a lot of sprained ankles from gymnastics. All right. Uh, gymnastics, uh, let's highlight that first of all, uh, because you've been at the state beat before, right? How many times have you been to the state? I think two or three, not quite sure. In, in what events? Um, I competed for beam and floor, and then beam individually. Let me ask you about uh, going to the state gymnastics meet. Uh, give us that experience if you could. When you walk into the place, what do you see? It's what are you thinking about? It's crazy. The Parade of Champions is probably the like most exciting thing of the whole thing. All these teams, throughout all the sections come in and you all walk out and you just see everybody like sitting out there and ev like all eyes are on you and it's like the greatest feeling in the world. So at the state gymnastics meet then uh, you're competing uh, again I think the most nerve-wracking point in a meet you tell me if I'm right is when you're standing there off to the side waiting for the judge to give you the nod. Yeah pretty <laughs> much. The competing <laughs> itself is not nerve-wracking it's waiting to compete, just yeah. standing there. Yes, yeah, so again, I'm trying to get inside your head. What are you thinking about that at that point? Uh, what are you saying to yourself? It's kind of like, breathe, just don't make eye contact with anybody, smile, look like you're ready. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a, a point of gymnastics that I, as I watch you compete and others compete too, that uh, you're looking for perfection, right? Oh, yeah. And so there's a lot of pressure, not only for the team's sake, but individually. And then if there is a mistake, I see some of the girls seem to be really hard on themselves. Are you, or do you see that? Oh, I'm definitely a head case. I strive for perfection in everything I do. So one mistake makes it set you back, feel like a million years. Like you, you've worked all your life for that, and then it just is like, boom, broken in one second. And but it's really not. You can like come back from it, but that's mm -hmm. what it feels like. Well, because at the state when you were there on the beam, you you fell off, yes. right? So at that point, what do you say to yourself? I was kind of. They're just like, well, I'll get it next year. And I was kind of disappointed in myself. And then after all the surgeries, I never really did get to redeem myself. So, 
As a uh, gymnast then, too, that's a winter sport. Yes. And you said your brother plays hockey. I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, tell me if I'm right here. There's a part of you that wouldn't mind playing hockey, too. Oh, definitely not. It was, no? I remember skating when I was little and playing hockey with my brother on, like, the lake and stuff like that. So I definitely... It had been a sport I would like to try if I did do gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So gymnastics was your life for the most part. Uh, when did you start doing that? When I was really young, I think it was like first kindergarten or first grade I started. I bounced between Long Prairie and Melrose and then when we transferred in third grade to Melrose I officially became a Melrose gymnast. And I'll bet you're one of those ones at halftime you're the one flipping around out oh, there. Oh yeah, right? I remember my share of halftime shows. <laughs> yes. So as you grow up though as a gymnast and your body changes and you're not 70 pounds anymore <laughs> okay uh, how do how do you adjust with that and, and how did change how did things change as you went along um well I realized that I <clears throat> was not a good person to do bars because I had no upper body strength as I got older and I found everything was in my legs so I kind of just tried to use my legs to my advantage of using my power on floor and doing all that one thing about being a gymnast too there's great enthusiasm isn't there <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, d tell us too then, uh, I know that uh, the coaches mean a lot to you, as you, you look at your coaches through the years in gymnastics, uh, what do you got to, what are your thoughts with them? Um, they've been, they're like second parents to me, they've, they've been there for the good and bad times, so it, it's hard to just leave them when you're a senior and just, oh, well I guess now that I've had all these years with you, I guess I'm just done now, so I'm hoping to get back in the gym and see them a lot this coming gymnastics season to come watch the girls. And you should name some names here for us, okay? Uh, Leah Costello will be one that will be hard to leave, especially because she's been like my little sister through everything. And then Cameron, of course, and Courtney and Miranda, and who else we got? That's all I can remember off the top of my head. All right, and I wanted you to mention the coaches too. Oh, right? Katie Masog, Cassie Schamberg, Jeremy Bearshite. Those are the ones that I've been with forever and of course Stacy Stein but she's not with our coaches anymore but she's one that was with me through all of it. So. But again uh, great memories of gymnastics right? Yes great yeah. good but, and bad memories. <laughs> well well just concentrate on the good, the good okay? Ones, yes. All right so now with, with softball uh, what position do you play? I am a catcher. You're a catcher. Yeah. Not a lot of girls like to play catcher do they? <laughs> no not really. <laughs> yeah so why is that and, and why are you a catcher? Well, I've been catching since seventh grade was my first time I ever played softball. And I was like, I'm not going to be a catcher. Like, I'm going to be the star infielder and be third base, first base. And I really sucked at those. So I was like, oh, why not try catching? And then it kind of just stuck with me ever since. And then that's where I've been for the rest of high school and middle school and all that fun so, stuff. So how would you describe uh, what does it take to be a good catcher? What, what are you good at? Um... <laughs> I really don't know what I would say I'm good at. I kind of just, like I said, I'm a perfectionist, so I try to just do my best at everything. Blocking, I'd probably say, is my weak spot, but otherwise I feel pretty confident everywhere else. You just have to be able to like handle the situations and not just like space out all the time. Do you find that uh, being a catcher is a good, uh, good spot to be a leader out there? Uh, I think so, but I think anywhere can be a good position. I feel like everybody has a voice on the team to say what needs to happen, and it's not just me looking at everybody. One thing I notice as I watch you play softball, too, you like to throw behind the runners, don't you? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so what are you seeing when you're doing that? Um, I don't really know. I kind of just look for opening and hope it gets where it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because you seem to do it much more so than anybody else, uh, because I will say this, you look like you have a really good arm. Uh, that was one of my biggest things I felt I needed to work on all through coming up to high school was I needed that strong arm. I needed to be able to get it there. So that was one of the biggest things I worked on pretty much my whole life. So take us through that. Though. What do you do to try to improve arm strength? A lot of hours just throwing as hard as I could back and forth from the distance of all the plates and just working and working and working, training down in St. Cloud. I played some baseball for Greenwald just to try to like get the distance I needed to get and just try my best. Is, uh, you know, I should ask you uh, right off the bat here too, uh, what do you plan on doing next year? I plan on going to Ridgewater to get my generals done. 
and start my get my coaching degree and then transfer to St. Cloud State to get my degree in physical education and hopefully play softball for them as I am playing for Ridgewater. Ah, great. So you are going to play some college softball. Yes, I am. Because I was going to bring that up with you because I think you can do that. Yeah, I'm excited. I feel like it's going to be a challenge because it's going to be a different speed of game and different people that I've never actually played with before. But I think it'll be fun and we'll get some good, I'll form some friendships that I'll miss from having here. Mm -hmm. So how are you hitting the ball? Not so good. <laughs> okay. Well, what is that going to take? Um, I've been trying to work in practice really hard, getting my extra cuts in as best, like as much as I can, and just got to keep that head in and just swing. What is the pitching like that you've been seeing so far this season? You haven't had that many games, but uh, are some pretty good throwers out there? Uh, yeah, we've had some pretty good throwers. A couple slow ones. Those are the ones where I tend to do a little bit better, <laughs> better on. My bat speed's not quite there yet, but we face a lot of fast ones, a lot of good defensive teams. Mm. Now you catch uh, Micaiah Littmer, yes. and I know that uh, she's got a good fastball. Do you try to move that around, or what is your thinking? Yeah, there? I like to use her fastball. She's learning her rise and change along with her drop, so we're going to start putting those into play a lot more. So I kind of just try to push her around. She likes the outside of the plate. That's where she usually gets all of her people. Work in the inside pitch more. Well, just don't want to hit a uh, lot of people. <laughs> uh, how, is the, how is softball going in Melrose, uh, the total program? Uh, on the upswing here? Yeah, we had a lot of girls come out this year. Um, we had great great turnout for the first couple practices. We are inside, unfortunately, for a while. But now that we're outside, it feels good to be outside, and everybody's looking great. Just need to get that oomph to keep us all going. Mm -hmm. I should go back to gymnastics, too, and just uh, talk about, uh, as you were a gymnast early on, you saw a lot of people come through the program, right? Yeah. A lot of gymnasts. Uh, who are some of the ones that uh, stood out to you, and, and what did you see in them that you wanted to do? Well, to start off, Kayla Ousting was a really big role model for me. I pretty much wanted to be just like her since I was little. I wanted to tumble like her. I wanted to pretty much be her. And then Jalen and Haley and Lydia Bukowski, Maddie Brinkman, all those girls, I just wanted to make it to the state meet, make the title they had. They were really the motivation to like keep going and pushing. Mm -hmm. But you know, you're right up there though too. <laughs> you're with all of them as well. So it's been fun watching you compete in gymnastics. I'm sorry about the injuries, <laughs> you know, but I guess that's all part of yeah. it. So you, you, you live and move on, right? Yep. Okay. And good luck in college. Thank you. And uh, have a good rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, okay? That's Mac Walbeck, and she's the Athlete of the Week, brought to you by Diamond Point and Sox Center here on Mid-Minnesota Sports.